Welcome back, guys. We are here with Fernando again. Ciao, Fernando. Hola. Ciao, 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 Silvia. Carissima. It's... Molto bene. Eh, spaghetti. <laughs> Pizza. Yes, sí, sí, empanada. I don't Ferrari. know. Empanada. Muy bien, muy bien. <laughs> Basic things with us, guys. Yes. <laughs> So we are getting together today to introduce a new path we're taking in our series uh, where we're gonna look at the major arcana as are well known around the world and how they play in the cards of truth system and to, to fully understand this we before um, look at what the masculine so the sun is and represents and what the moon is and represents and in honor of the moon my atma karka i'm like you know <laughs> and and my atma karka is the sun oh excellent guys you have so we have we have a very very a very manly man and a very womanly woman <laughs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully yeah yeah <laughs> because i'm i'm very feminine sometimes so yeah and i can be very masculine as well yeah, because we're astrologers and that's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> to blend the two things. Exactly. So, um, we had this idea to um, look into these two wonders of creation, the masculine and the feminine, through the lenses of Brihad Parashara or Shastra that left us the magical uh, sutras. So, they through which we can better understand in a very simple but effective way what these two um, archetypes represent and what they're made of. Shall we start with? Uh, ladies first, but we should go with men first. Yeah, we go with the sun first. So let me share the presentation. There we go. Can you see it, Fernando? Yes, yes, I can see it. For those who do not know, uh, this is a quote from Brihad Parashara Hora Shastra, which is probably like the most important book in Vedic astrology. And what, what Brihad Parashara Hora Shastra means is basically it's Sanskrit for the great treatise on horoscopic astrology by Parashara. And, and this specific shloka or quote is from chapter 3 where uh, Parashara talks about the planets and their qualities. Excellent. Magical. So when he describes the sun, which in Sanskrit is named Surya, uh, for those that, that I don't know are into yoga, they know the Surya Namaskaram, for example. Surya is the sun. And translated in English, it states, honey yellow dyed, is the sun, square and radiantly poor, pure, of pitta nature, intelligent, masculine, with but little hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what this means. <laughs> Honey well, yellow dyed is the sun. So there is this color is the first thing that uh, Parashara tells us. Uh, wanting to convey a quality of the sun which is wonderful and is so needed in this world which is the royal status of the sun yes and and also you know honey is sweet yes. so although although he might have very powerful fiery eyes deep down inside there, there's a sweetness to it that a lot of people like yeah but because it comes from being just Exactly. No? Takes and the constant. action that is needed. Yes. It's not, it's not purposely, purposefully, uh, I don't know, unjust towards anybody. Exactly. Just like the king should. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. First quality is that it's very regal, meaning it's very appropriate, just, and it's not casual or any, on anything. It's attentive and capable of understanding the situation in the same way in the, that in the old ages, the royals were supposed to be able to look after the population, the, you know, villages yes. and stuff and the kingdom. 
Yes, and, and we must remember this historical term of the divine right of kings. In essence, the kings in traditional times were the representatives of God on earth. Yes, exactly. and, and, and they were king because they were, you know, uh, lesser gods or to a certain degree they were representatives of God. And even in some cultures, they were considered gods. But yeah. this is the idea of, of, of the king figure. He's the figurehead. He's the human fountainhead from which all authority and all will uh, emanates. But we must remember that the son doesn't really do anything. He just orders. He just is. And yeah. by being, everybody else uh, reacts to him and hence actions occur. But it has that wisdom. Yes. Upon which he decides what is okay, what is not what is to be withhold and what is being let, right? Yes. There's not discrimination upon um, a feeling, it's upon wisdom and kept in, and that skill of being able to see exactly what is needed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and one, one thing I was, uh, it came to mind when you were talking about the royals, uh, see that the, the color associated is this yellow in the same way that uh, the gold metal is the same color. And royals, even today, they wear gold because it's the metal associated to the sun is conductive to the energy of the sun, especially the 24 carats is attuned with the, um, with the qualities of the sun. So it's not a case that it's not like being fancy or something that they used to wear these metals, uh, the gold. Yes. The brown and everything. And now we move on to this square thing that for women, it sounds sometimes too tough to deal with, but it's very precious quality. Yes. And, and this comes from traditional um, qualities, you know, square right angles sharpness is always associated with the male principle while mm -hmm. circular oval shape uh, forms are associated with the moon and we're going to see that when we look at the moon exactly. but when it says here square and radiantly poor what it's referring is to the quality of the masculine energy and and you can see this also with the platonic uh uh the the platonic figures of the metatonic cube from sacred uh, uh, from sacred geometry where all figures associated with the male are sharp all the five uh, platonic uh, solids are associated with male and the circle the perfect circle is female and you you know when you see a man who has a lot of lines in his body who is really got mus with a lot of muscles or has a sharp jaw that generally is attractive because that generally uh, exemplifies the male qualities. Right. It's, a strong sun gives uh, like sharp uh, shoulders, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it gives it gives uh, sharp constitution depending where the sun is. Yeah. Uh, and in addition to this, you know, we 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 can see this through basic anatomy, uh, basic biology. You know, looking at the male genitalia, looking at the female genitalia how the male is, is straight, a right angle, square to a certain degree, and how the uh, female genitalia are more oval, uh, more round. Um, even at, at, at the ovum and the sperm, the sperm is long and straight yeah. with, with, a, with a tail, but uh, the ovum is a circle. And there you can start to see um, in physical form, in biological terms, these uh, deep esoteric truths that convey writings like we have Parashara Horashara Chastra when referring to the qualities of the male and the female. Yeah, it's beautiful that you mentioned that. I love it because um, the risk is that all of this remains so abstract and intellectual or philosophical, where it's actually not just because the philosophical here meets the physical. So we talk about principle that can be applied, applied as a pattern onto anything that is creation. And so I'm really, very glad you mentioned that. So that one 
let's mention this about the square print um, quality. It's stable. If you have yes. a square or a cube, it doesn't roll and goes anywhere. So if yeah. you need something stable, then the principle is very, very, very important. And women want men usually to be re reliable. When they say something, they do what they said. Mm -hmm. It's the square principle. You know, you are yeah. reliable. Then maybe it's a little bit diff different and difficult when something needs to be changed and moved on or moved around. If it's square, you know, <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, and, and this is and this is the idea from which we get. Uh, to a certain degree, the definition of the number four in the cards, yes. which is stability, which is merit, which is security, and it has to do with this idea of the square. The square is the most solid thing ever. You know, a table uh, has four legs, and you can probably put a table on a house, and that house can be abandoned for 150 years, and that table is still going to be there in 150 Standard. years. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, unless you know, it, it gets uh, corrupted or, or somebody hits it. But, but in a way, you know, that's the idea of the male principle. Yeah, it's, a, solid, it's amazing. Or it should be solid. Well, we need it. In creation, we do need it. Otherwise, everything would be fluctuating around and nothing would be ever made concrete. No? Correct. Right. So let's appreciate this about men. Yeah. They can, they have this quality, let's see it as a quality. Then when the case needs more fluctuating energy, let's call for the feminine energy. <laughs> don't, let's don't blame men for being square when they are. Okay. I really have this theory in my, in, because there is so much misunderstanding between the sexes. You know, when qualities are seen as hindrances. You know, yes, and, I, and, and another thing, you know, we have to realize that these are um, real energies. These are real things. These are not necessarily social constructs. These absolutely. are esoteric. Uh, this is wisdom of all ages. This is something that's going to be like this uh, now that it was like this 2,000 years ago and it will be like this 2,000 years from now. You know, this is perennial knowledge. We can call it building blocks. Um, oh, yeah. Concrete yeah, yeah, yeah. reality, which is sure. not just, but you know, if they they affect. Uh, let's. Um, I didn't mention this. I said men and women at large. It applies on the population that men can um, can show some traits more manly, more suri oriented, but that 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 doesn't mean that women can also have that. Definitely, because okay. we are all. You know, we are all a product of three points, you know, our father, our mother, and ourself. And we have a male part from our father, and we have a female part from our mother. But at the same time, our mother has a female and a male part, and our father has a female and a male part, and we have a female and a male part. That's why we have a sun and a moon, uh, a Venus and a Mars in all our charts. Yeah. And we all have a little bit of uh, male energy, we all have a little bit of female energy. Some people have more female energy than others. Some people have more male energy than others. And some people have neutral energy in terms of how they both combine. But yes. in essence, you know, biologically... We uh, can't deny that, our biology. Definitely. You know, no, biologically, you're either a woman or a man. Yeah. Uh, biologically, you know, by, by your genitalia, uh, yeah. by your capacity to, to have children if you're a woman and your capacity not to or and your incapacity not to have uh, children uh, by a man and and this is you know the reality of things yes and you know if you're a woman biologically speaking you are in tune with the cycle of the moon which is by 28 days so it's very rapid it's very very much changing and we we're gonna see through the uh, sutra that that's up, that applies to the qualities of the moon let's say qualities let's repeat is a quality while the cycle of the the sun goes by 12 years so mm -hmm. let's see how different our bodies are set on these cycles which are very different and we cannot pretend it's not like that should we continue reading absolutely 
of Pitta nature. So for the lovers of um, Ayurveda, they might be familiar with this word Pitta. Yes, Pitta is a form of bread that comes from the yeah. Arab world, which is very good with hummus and baba ganoush, right? Pitta bowls no? also? Yes, yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> Pitta bowls, yeah, very good. <laughs> Clubs, people, you're such a club person. <laughs> The pita is the fire. Yes. Wow. The pita is the it's, fire. it's one of the it's one of the doshas, and it's technically composed of two of the five uh, 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 mahabhutas, mm -hmm. which are the five elements, which would be obviously ether, fire, wind, earth, and water. And pita in itself is a combination of water and fire, yeah. but it's technically fire from mm. the Ayurvedic perspective and Pita represents in essence the transformation processes that goes inside of our body the chemical processes by which energy is transformed by which energy is uh, not destroyed but by which energy by, by which something is changed into another thing yeah and this comes from being very active and wanted to intervene when its uh, action is needed. Correct. Pitta. Pitta provokes action. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it's also yeah. associated with Dharma and it's also associated with fire and it's also associated with our, our Dharmic callings, our instincts and our higher and our higher instincts. Absolutely. And we will see just one word after that one that is also connected to the intelligence. intelligence yes. Pita. Yes. Comes from the fire element. And finally, it says masculine, but with little hair. Wow, that, this is a, such a wonderful a piece of li literature. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. found an amazing way to say what he wanted to say. Masculine, you know, and, self -evident. And, and, yeah, and I know a lot about the little hair because, you know, I wear a hat because of, of that reason. So, you know, it, it's basically the idea that the sun is so powerful that it will burn everything that is not necessary. And, and hair is something that is not of uh, supreme biological importance. Although hair protects you to a certain degree from, from insects and also it Let's kind see. of cushions your head and, and other yeah. parts of your body. But, but besides that, it's really not uh something that necessary. necessary that's why you can cut it it's not necessary to sustain life exactly which sun is made for is yes. therefore that it wants to preserve life so well now let's leave hair for the for the uh, women and <laughs> more gentle energies the sun doesn't need to look after that other things are gonna look up to, uh, look after what makes things pretty beautiful pleasant attractive the sun just has this urge of making sure that life is sustained that's yes. all it does and it does it in this very noble way meaning that it's never gonna um hit something or somebody just to preserve some something or somebody else it's gonna be just so if he has to help you, he's not going to um, go down on somebody else just to save you. Okay? It's going to be noble. Definitely. And, and once again, we have here uh, uh, the word masculine before the, the hair. Yeah. And, and what does that mean? You know, sometimes we see masculine and feminine, and, and there are different qualities to it. You know, masculine can be that yang energy from the yin yang. Yeah. It can be that, that Purusha from the Prakriti and Purusha principles in Vedic, in Vedic thought. But in essence, what masculine really means, it's someone who likes to fix things, who likes to make things happen, who likes to get Active. recognition. Exactly. Who, got, who likes to get recognition for, for his actions. Yeah. Who, like, who likes to get recognized for helping people, for fixing people. And at the same time, and this is also very important, a masculine energy has the capacity to do things even though they don't, don't want to do them. You know, even though they don't want to, they don't feel like doing them. Just because it's needed. 
exactly, you know, it's the idea of duty, of constancy. Yeah. It's the idea of following your inspiration to the fullest, no matter what happens. And, I always, and, sorry, sorry. No, you? no, go ahead. I always think about uh, being responsible, meaning being able to respond to the situation. Definitely. Uh, I always think about something very simple, like there is something on the floor that is, is there, like a, a piece of paper or whatever. If you are responsible, if you are capable of responding, responding um, to the surroundings, you're gonna pick it up. No effort. It's just your action is needed because the situation is that that the the, the paper, piece of paper needs to be picked up. That's all. So there is no stress about the action. Correct. That's the pure essence of the essence of the masculine. If we, if we think about when we are stressed about doing something is when the emotional side gets in the way. Which it's is more of a feminine principle, exactly. Yes. Well, so we go and see what the feminine looks like. We Obviously more beautiful than the male. <laughs> Chandra. That's the Sanskrit name for the moon. And its, um, it's sutra say, says, abounding of vata, in vata and kapha, and filled with knowing is the moon of brown body, or twice born, especially eyed, of sweet speech, fluctuating and lovesick. Okay, the last word is sick. Oh, good. We're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's sick. You know, remember, women bleed once a month. You know, it, it's it's something that that it's part of of the nature of of of, of the female energy to a certain degree. Yeah, it's very. See, the way I say the the Surya Sutra is very straightforward. There's, you can in, investigate and understand, in, go into deep in understanding what the principles are, but are more are easier to grasp, in my opinion. Where the Chandra Sutra, it's everything and nothing at the same time, in my perception. Mm -hmm. Though mm -hmm. it's not nothing, but okay. Let's see, abandoning in Vata and Kapha. Yeah, Those once it's doshas. Yes, once again, we start with the doshas. And, you know, some people say that, that the moon is, is fully um, kapha. Uh, but in, technically, you know, the moon is actually half vata, half kapha, kapha. And these are the other two doshas. Vata yeah. is basically a combination of, of air and ether. Mm -hmm. And kapha is a combination of uh, water and earth. But in essence, vata is, is air. And yeah. kapha is, is earth. Well, and if it was only kapha, it wouldn't have the movement. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and vata is basically that, just what you said. It's the movement. That dosha is related to the movements of the body, you know, the, the blood flowing, the, the bones moving, the cartilage, the muscles. I mean, the, not the bones, the muscles moving the bones. Uh, Everything moving. that is movement. Exactly. Internally, uh, but also the mind. Exactly. Been Definitely. Moving a lot. In our digestive system, our ideas, everything that's moving. And kapha, it's basically the dosha that relates to the massification of things, to the idea of, of support, of, of mass, of having a, a body, of having the support that is needed for other functions to occur. And that's what the moon does. It provides movement and it provides um, a support, contrary to the sun that provides transformation through the pita element, to the pita dosha, I'm sorry, pita dosha. Mm -hmm. And afterward, it says it's filled with knowing. Let's remember what the sun said. The sun said he was intelligent. intelligent. Yeah. And now we see that the moon is filled with knowing. So... The next time, and this is something our teacher says, you know, the next time that somebody asks you which, who is more intelligent, man or woman, you're going to say man, obviously, but then you're going to say but women are not intelligent because they know it all. Yeah. Without so what's, thinking, what's better? <laughs> yeah, one, is, one goes through the thinking process 
to figure out things. That way you analyze the structure of things and you get to know things. And this is the intelligence. But the knowing of the knowledge, the wisdom, comes from elsewhere, not from the thinking. But you know, Western, Western civilization is so linked to this being smart, and being able to you know, dissect, where if you dissect, if I dissect you, I come to Puerto Rico, you give me empanadas, and then I say, I want to know Fernando better, and then I dissect you, I won't, I won't be able to know you better. I need to embrace the whole thing that you are, human being, nothing. Uh, by that, I will know you. And this is the difference between intelligence and knowing. The moon Very knows, cool. if you've been around women, you know that sometimes you go like, well, how did she figure that out? Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's why women hate each other. But <laughs> I mean, and there's a saying, women always find out, right? And, yeah. and if they don't find out, you're going to be constantly, you know, acting or constantly lying or constantly creating an illusion in order for them not to find out, but they usually find out. And, and, you know, women have that sensibility. And when it comes to analyzing an astrological chart or doing uh, card readings, you see these, both of these energies coming up. You know, the solar, the male energy, when you analyze things, as you said, is, is dissecting. It is, you know, analyzing, going beyond, uh, knowing what people have said before, which would be the knowledge from books and all that while the lunar side is just the inclination, the perception, the intuition that goes on when you are reading cards. For example, you, you, you throw cards, right? You do a mm -hmm. spread. And the solar principle is going to be, hmm, this is what my teacher said. This is what it means, this card here. This is what this position means, this and that. And this combined with that. And that's like more of the male aspect of the thinking when it comes to card reading. Well, the female energy, it's just you throw the cards and the first thing that pops into your mind, that's, that's the female energy. And, and it's not necessarily wrong. It's just no. all knowing. It, it, it is easy that, that when you... When you have a person that's so much going on with them, they're not like two dimensional, they are multi-dimensional. So there's so much that comes to the awareness of the person uh, that is consulting for them. But there are certain things that are supposed to hear from you that moment. So the moon picks that up, in my opinion. It's like, I don't know, probably you went through this, you go through this as well, when you have a spread in front of you. and all of a sudden you don't know how you connected two cards out of the spread and you go like, Oh, 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 <laughs> this is what is behind all of this. And it is a connection that you don't pursue. It comes to you. That's the difference between the male and the feminine, the, the masculine and the feminine. Sorry. Definitely. Definitely. The, you find something in your awareness and that's because you were passive and receptive where the masculine have studied dissected the, the subject and knows the connections by um, having studied which is essential we need to go do this we cannot only be you know like rolling our, our, our eyes up and go like oh it's this and that <laughs> so we need both of them and and that is something that that doing cards, reading astrology trains you to do, yeah. to combine those energies. And the best astrologers, um, the best card readers are people who can really balance both these hemispheres. Yeah, though our teacher, I'm, I'm bringing yeah. <laughs> our teacher in, which is, let's say it's Ernst Wilhelm. Yes. Um, it says that uh, for Atmakarka Moon people, he's very confident that they are going to uh, give good readings based not about on the knowledge that they have but because they probably are gonna pick up what is needed to be said <laughs> which is very easy and comf comfortable place to be where the male part needs to be working a bit more <laughs> yeah that's me yeah. to be well you wonderful two of clubs you know so 
Uh, that? Yeah, that, that also has a moon energy. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, that's true. See, uh, my, my queen of clubs is, you know, it's mainly a five. That's true. A black five. So it's very masculine if you think about it. That's true. So okay. we continue reading and it, and it says, fill with so knowing is the moon and of round body. Yeah, this is, see, my face is very round. Yes, it's well, very round. It's very, very round. <laughs> I'm a little bit overweight. I'm lying, Let's, I'm lying. Uh, <laughs> Let's give it away. I'm not very. <laughs> it's um, okay. You're you're having a round face, and I'm going bold. So it's you know. We're, we're okay. We are so stereotypical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the best people to make this video. <laughs> we promise we're not making this up. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, so the moon is of round body, meaning that it pursues the path of least resistance. In the same way, the mind usually goes towards the thinking process that is uh, the moon is accustomed to. The mind is accustomed to. So if you're pessimistic, the mind will go that way. Mm -hmm. If you're optimistic. The mind will go that way. If your tendency is to think that all the people are hostile to you, there the mind is going to go any instance it has possible because it's not making an effort to think or perceive. It's just wired, basically. This doesn't mean that it can, can't be rewired. It just means that it's very uh, comfortable in the way that it's always been. Yes. And once again, we, we see this dichotomy between the round body of a female energy and the sharp body of a male energy. And I, I use the illusion of, I use the metaphor of the male and female genitalia, but we can see even the, the female body. Just think about what the perfect female body would be, it would be so a very best. round body with, with round breasts, round buttocks, you know, proportionate, obviously, and a beautiful male body would be a sharp body, no fat or, or very little fat, right. you know, very muscles, sharp muscles, defined, the lines, the right angles are very defined in the abs, in the jaw, in the biceps, you know, while yeah. a woman's uh, perfect body would be very round, very proportionate and very beautiful in that sense. Uh, and so when once a woman has a, a baby, is pregnant, is even definitely. more... Uh, Definitely. There's more of this, there's an emphasis on this rounding. Uh, Definitely. Rounded, yeah, we got this. So we, we uh, let's remember we made of both of this. So we need both of this to yes. last in the being rounded or stuck in being square. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Which is something that a lot of people might, might do. So yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's where we get upset, basically, between sexes. Definitely. Because we cannot see our own potential, potential as equality, and we don't give our, the other one the same privilege. Because and then, we don't see it in us. Exactly. In us. Then we project what we have inside of us, and we fail to reach that balance within us, and hence we project that this balance uh, to the outer world. Yeah, I personally benefited so much from the knowledge of these two sutras. Oh, full, full, without a doubt. I mean, and that's what, what uh, the study of astrology and cards do. It, it gives you wisdom to understand that these energies are real, they are within your heart, and that you have to balance them to, to reach uh, a happy life. Yeah, um, you know, it's just, you, you start to, to recognize traits and you somehow have the ability now and the knowledge to give it a place. It, 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 because without an explanation of all the factors that are making us what we are, all the events comes up and they seem to be completely random. Like, so if you have a manifestation of your being square, I can't, I can't put a label in a good way and say, oh, this is his quality, okay? It's not something that is um, just 
I don't know, playing against the game that I want to play with you. Because when I need you to be square, then I can appreciate that. So if I am aware of the fact that you are square and I'm rounded, when I'm rounded and it's useful, I can bring it up and share it with you to, to benefit both of us. And when you are square, I can appreciate that. Instead of just blaming, you know, the equality when it's misplaced in time. So when we show equality that is not needed in that moment, we blame each other. But we never really, we are not accustomed so much to uh, appreciate it when it's, when it's needed, when it's appropriate. I went a long ramble, but I hope it was clear. <laughs> no, you were, you were. And, and, you know, we finished the shloka saying, uh, all twice born are auspici auspiciously eyed of sweet speech, fluctuating and lovesick. We have, we have to remember that when he says all twice born, he's referring to Maitreya, who is um, the person who Parasha is speaking to because we have Parasha, Harash Astra is basically a, a dialogue between the master Parasha and his student Maitreya. And then he goes on and says, the moon house is auspiciously eyed of sweet speech fluctuating and loves it. So basically auspiciously eyed is, is that it has very beautiful eyes and, and women usually are more beautiful than men in my opinion, of sweet speech that they always have a, a way of talking, a way of finding their way, uh, of, of maximizing their tools according to the situation in terms of using that emotional um, perspective to reach their goals because you got to remember men are usually stronger than women physically so mm -hmm. women have to resort to other tools in order in order to win the fight and that is through their speech yeah through their to their communication uh -huh, yeah there's also uh, this this all-knowing thing that comes into play in here oh definitely without because a doubt you are all-knowing you know the part of the other one you know the full picture. So you're not going to be blaming, bitching, and bickering. Because you, in, in your way, you're appropriate with um, the reading of the situation that you do. Because the moon does that. It's like a windshield that makes you interpret your reality. If you Definitely. are spot on with reality, so you're, if you are true with the truth, then you're not going to misunderstand and you're not going to be bitching and bickering and, you know, being um, bitter in your words. If this is actually from a moon at Makarka. <laughs> it's a very good uh, test to understand how the moon of the person is. If it's bitchy, even behind somebody's back, you don't, it doesn't need to be confront, confront, confronting the other one. Sorry, guys, I had an Italian moment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. That's, that's your Latin side, yeah. Yes. You're, you're Etruscan side. Do, do they use, use that word there? No, Etruscan, no. Etruski. Yeah, Etruski. Do they still use that there? No. Yeah, oh, it's, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, it's very common for us. I mean, if we go back. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah that's your Etruscan side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was saying auspiciously eyed also is linked to this all-knowing. All so it has the ability to see what it is and it's going to speak accordingly to what it is. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. If you have this, uh, this friend of yours, male or female, doesn't make any difference, that is bitching about people, you know that they are suffering with their, their chandra, their moon is not balanced, is not working in the best way possible. Let's put it this way, okay? Um, so watch out the way you talk about others, the, the way you talk about circumstances, uh, people, pets, whatever on that. Buster took my um, spot at the parking lot. Oh, well, <laughs> if you go that to the, uh, down that road, then you know their your mood is as loved vision. Yes. Please. And then it says fluctuating and lovesick. Yes. So, you know, we have to remember that in astrology, the moon likes to be with, with other planets usually. 
the moon suffers when it's alone. The moon suffers when it has a, 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 a position called Kemadruma Yoga, which is very rare, to be honest, because it usually gets canceled. But the moon likes to be... Yeah, I have it, but it's canceled. Okay. <laughs> 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 And, and, and it likes to be with, with benefics. It likes to be with good people. So it fluctuates because the moon adapts to the situation it is in and it functions, yeah. right? But it also in the sky changes shape. Definitely. Not and every that's, day. that's what I want to exactly. Oh, and, then you have, and then you have the difference. No, it doesn't matter at all. Don't worry about that. And it, and it, and it, uh, and it fluctuates in terms of the lunar cycles from mm -hmm. full moon to new moon, crescent moon. Uh, a dying moon and so on and you know this is the idea lovesick because the moon is constantly being born and dying yeah you know, as it grows with light as it decreases in light and and this is a very important quality of a female because as we describe the masculine energy what what makes the female energy female it is the idea of wanting to belong to something bigger than themselves yeah to come to connect, exactly, to connect with other people, to nurture other people, and at the same time to help other people to feel that they're part of something else. And at the same time, contrary to the male energy, the moon energy will usually not want to do something if it's not feeling like doing that something. And, and that's a very important quality that, that mm -hmm. distinguishes the male and female. Yeah. The male does, doesn't matter how he feels, he just has to do it because it's his duty. And the female energy will not do things if, if, it's, if it's not the right time. And, and this is the idea. good uh, yeah. of, of, the, of, of the self also. If the female doesn't like herself, Definitely. doesn't appreciate herself, even in the image, inner and outer, it can get stuck quite easily. And this is the power of the full moon. You know, the full moon happens once a month and it's the most beautiful moon. And when there's a full moon, it's the perfect time to have an intent, to have an energy and manifest it out in the world because it's the perfect time to do things. And actually, you know, in ritual magic, in ritual astrological magic, the moon is, is of incredible importance in creating talismans, in creating uh, amulets. Because you have to wait until the moon is in a specific place in order for you to do the work. And just like a mother who gives everything to their child, when the moon is in the right place at the right moment with the right light, it will give whatever you invoke to it. Yeah, it, it brings this, uh, the light of the sun on a quantity, I would say, not quality the quality is still the light of the sun that is reflecting mm -hmm. but in a quantity that is manageable because the sun burns it's and at the so same much. and at the same time you can see the idea of, of of the female energy wanting to belong to something bigger than themselves in this case it would be how the moon reflects the sun's energy which is something much bigger than than the moon and how it uses it and it becomes more more powerful by by being part of that interaction yeah and this is also a the principle upon which the humanity and the planet itself has grown by wanting to be with something in connection to something bigger so meaning <laughs> um i want to i don't know have money to travel to go to the near town Okay, I get this money and I go to the near town to visit uh -huh. the town. And then I come back home and then I, I start to feel sick and want it, sick, love sick, wanting to connect to something bigger because now I had that in the bag. So I want to go to the next region and then I want to go to the next country and then I want to go at the end of the world. You know, this is how humanity has grown. So it's a a tool that is very useful for humanity to evolve, but let's remember that it's gonna keep us always unsatisfied because once you, um, once you connect with something, then you want the next bigger thing, okay? So in this case, seek, I think, is 
um, in my perception is there for this because it's very useful when you want to improve and uh, aspire for more but at the same time it's never gonna be fulfilling for real like you know, when you fulfill the sun, it's going to be it. But Chandra, the moon, will always want for something more after that. So that's how we build. It's important to know. Yeah. You there? Yeah. Yeah, yes. So I, are we finished here, right? Yeah, I think we are. We can wrap it up and say that when we talk about the masculine principle is the active part of creation that wants and, to think and, and the, uh -huh. sorry no no continue continue i'm sorry that wants to do things in the noble way so yes. not for the ego not for me to to be shining not for me to be recognized i'm going to be, rec be recognized as a result of my nobility and my action is not the reason why I'm doing things. I'm doing things because I'm responsible. I'm capable of responding to the circumstances around me. And the female principle is the idea of a more passive, but at the same time, Absolutely. passively active by helping that male energy to do what it has to do by providing the necessary nurturing, the necessary uh, female energy to really make that action grow. And you describe the male and I describe the female and I think that's very nice. Yes. So we can say, uh, see you next time to the people and thank them for being with us. They're very caring in the feedback that they send us. So thank you guys for being with us and then we will see you with the Major Arcana afterwards. Take care. Ciao Fernando, grazie. Ciao Silvia, grazie. Mille. <laughs> <laughs> ciao, ciao.